Welcome to the pipe organ of the Washington National Cathedral. We are standing here in what's called the Great Division of the pipe organ. This is one of the largest and most powerful divisions of the organ. And if you've, if you've heard the organ at its loudest, this, these are the pipes which are making that sound. Uh, if you look around us, the pipes are arranged in rows and columns, essentially. So if you, uh, if you look here, you'll see one of the largest pipes of this rank of pipes that comes right down. So all of these pipes make essentially the same tone, but because they're different lengths, they make different pitches. The smaller pipes make the higher sounds. And then, if you look next to it, there's another rank of pipes here that makes a different sound, and they also have one pipe for each note. So as you look around this chamber, you'll see pipes of very different sizes and very different shapes. The different sizes make the different pitches, and the different shapes make the different, different tones, the different sounds of the organ. So we call that a rank of pipes when there's a, a row of pipes that all make the same tone organized from the largest to the smallest pipe within that rank. Here I've pulled out a couple pipes for you to look at. This is what we call a principal pipe. It's made of metal, made of what we call common metal, this particular pipe. It is built like a whistle, essentially, so the air comes in at this end. It comes out the mouth of the pipe, this slit that's cut into the pipe. And when it does so, it passes over this lip, and then that causes the air inside to vibrate and might make it sound. When the pipe is seated in its place on what we call the wind chest, called that because it's a box of air, a wind chest. The pipe doesn't play, even though the compressed air is right beneath it. There's a little valve underneath each pipe, each one of these pipes, and from the keyboard, we control those valves. When we press the note, the valve opens, and the compressed air comes up and plays the pipe, it rushes up through. Here I've pulled out one of the smallest pipes in the organ. This is very small. And most of what we're looking at here is not the actual speaking part of the pipe, but just getting the speaking part of the pipe away. Just from here to there is the only part of the pipe that actually makes the sound. So that's very small indeed, only maybe a half an inch long. The rest of this is just for structure so that it has a little bit more uh, material there so it doesn't fall apart. So all of these are so delicate and have to be adjusted just so, so that they play the correct pitches. Over here on this side of the division, I have a couple more, couple more pipes that I've pulled out. Here's one made of wood. This is a little bit more durable than the metal pipes. This is, makes a sort of flute sound. You might recognize it almost looks like one of those um, children's train whistle toys, but that's, it's exactly the same construction, really. The air rushes up from the wind chest when the valve opens, up through the pipe and vibrates the column of air inside, and that makes the sound. And then here, we have what's called a reed pipe, so-called because if we open this up, you can see inside there's a vibrating reed made of brass. Just having that vibrating piece of brass, very thin brass right here, makes the, gives the, uh, the pipe a different tone. This one sounds like a trumpet and gives it a lot more volume than you can get with just a, uh, what we call a flue pipe that doesn't have any moving parts in it. So we're standing here in front of what might be uh, described as the second most important division inside the organ. This is called the swell division. It's given that name because its volume can be made to swell. It can get louder and softer without changing its tone, without changing the stops. And the way it does that is by means of these expression shades that we're standing in front of, sometimes called swell shades. And these open and close a bit like window blinds. They're very thick wood. They absorb a lot of sound. And they, when they're closed, they close from a control on the console, a foot control. When they're closed, they really block a lot of the sound that comes out of the pipes. So this gives us a bit of subtlety and a little bit of volume control over the organ. Uh, instead of the uh, broad strokes of the great division where the stops just come on and off.
We're standing here in the Sowerby swell division of the organ. A second swell division uh, is not a usual feature of most organs, but this one has two named in, uh, in memory of Leo Sowerby, who was a, an amazing American church music composer and church musician who was associated with the College of Church Musicians here at the cathedral for many years. Right here, you can see a lot of the mechanicals of the organ. Here on the floor, this is what's called a regulator. This controls the pressure of the air that comes up from the blowers. There's a valve inside this box that makes sure that the pressure stays constant. Then the air goes into here, the wind chest, where it is essentially kept from feeding the pipes right away by a series of valves inside. And here on the side, you can see a few of those valves. These are magnetically controlled valves. When they open, the air is free to go up into the pipes. What we're looking at here is the pipes of the solo tuba mirabilis. The tuba mirabilis in Latin means miraculous trumpet. And this really is that. This stop dates back to the 1938 original specification of the organ and it's going to be reused in the renovated organ as well. It's a really commanding trumpet sound, but the pipes have already been removed to make way for the construction scaffolding that we're about to put up and will be up for some years. So these pipes had to be set aside for the moment. Underneath these tuba pipes are what look like wooden boxes. These are actually more pipes of the organ, some of the heaviest and uh, lowest pitch pipes in the organ. These are about, the longest one is 16 feet long, but these pipes have a cap on the end, a stopper, and the sound as it comes down bounces off that and returns, so its journey is twice as long. So even though the pipe is only 16 feet, it speaks as if it were 32 feet long and therefore makes some of the lowest pitches in this organ. And the largest of these, we estimate, is about 800 pounds. I'm standing all the way back here at the end of the longest pipe in the organ. This is low C of the 32-foot contraviolone. It lies on its side and it extends all the way down here. Luckily, when we remove this pipe and reinstall it, we get to do it in two pieces. It comes apart right about here, splits in half, so we don't have to carry a 32-foot pipe all the way down to the floor. And it ends all the way back here where the mouth of the pipe is seen here. On either side of me here are the two massive blowers that provide the compressed air to the organ upstairs above us, two floors above us. So these gather the air from the space that we're in and push it upstairs at pressure that's required. They are very large fans inside these two, uh, two housings. To my left here is one of the pressure regulating reservoirs of the organ. The air comes out of the blower, it comes directly into here, and inside this box are valves that make sure that the pressure stays absolutely constant at all times. This top of the reservoir right here, this board moves with the air pressure to make sure it always remains constant, and these springs are actually what make the pressure squeeze the squeeze the reservoir and make sure that the pressure stays absolutely constant.